we're into it. It has begun. What is up, you sexy beast? Hope you had a fantastic week. It's Friday already, I can't believe it. Every Friday, I treat myself a little strawberry white chocolate muffin. I always have coffee every day, but the muffin's only a Friday thing. I've been tracking my food now for nine weeks straight. Every single thing that goes to my body, I have tracked. That is an, if you know me, that's an accomplishment. That's a miracle. And uh, it's going good. So every Friday, I reward myself for being good, you know, for being good all week long. But hey, let me turn this camera around. Let's see what's happening back here. If you, uh, if you watch the vlog regularly, you will know that um, I always change things. I change things around all the time. And uh, we're going to change the gym. And not only has it begun, it's well on its way. In fact, it's pretty much done. <laughs> and it's not done, but a big part of it's done. Have a look. See that little platform with the four posts? Well, that, um, that was a little cubby house that I built for my daughter. It's now gone. We just ripped into it. It went so fast, I, couldn't even, uh, I didn't even film it. So anyway, that's gone. So the plan up until now has been to get rid of the cubby house, get rid of that wooden platform, and just astroturf the whole backyard. That way you can do sled pushes and handstand walks, not mow the lawns, and just have a great area to play in. Uh, problem is, my daughter wants to replace the cubby house with a jungle gym. She loves the monkey bars, and so I'm all for that. I'd prefer a jungle gym over a, uh, a cubby house. So that's got to fit in here somewhere, and then my gear still has to sit on top of something, right? And it has to be uh, out of the weather. So I'm thinking I might actually keep that little wooden platform and build some weatherproof storage for the gear. And so that little wooden platform can become our seating area, resting area between sets. Then her jungle gym can go behind that, which means it only leaves a pretty small strip, a pretty small strip of grass left um, to AstroTurf. So I might end up just doing like a track of AstroTurf rather than turfing the whole backyard. So um, probably work out a whole lot cheaper, which is not a bad thing. So as you can see, the gym's a bit of a disaster zone at the moment, just stuff everywhere. In fact, it's a hazard zone. There's just nails and screws lying around everywhere. So I can't really work out in here. So I'm going to head over to my friends Kara and Matt Saunders' house, have a workout with them and their new outdoor gym that they're working on, and then uh, when I get back, we'll have a chat about the Dubai CrossFit Championships. Enjoy this.
See how Rockman innovates for you today? Oh. Probably part of the team. Nice. <laughs> they're so good. I have like one pair that's slightly newer, and so they're like a bit less worn in. They'll wear them for like real heavy lifts. Yeah. But I like I like them all like, you know, when they're like weathered and they're yeah. good to you. Totally. They've like become part of my foot now. How good is this pool? Tell me about the pool. Yeah, we've, well, we've had it for since September, October, November, so almost three months. And it's been epic, but we just still haven't got our decking built because builders are like so busy right now. So we still have the scary ladder climb in. <laughs> I'm usually doing my accessories and she's, they get to go for a swim. Yeah. <laughs> I love the glass, eh? It's so good. One, two, three. Set, yeah. go, head down, go. Head down. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> The content queen. <laughs> I know, she loves it. Yes, what is up, you sexy beasts? Ah, I just love those guys. The Saunders family, just the most down to earth people. They have the best chat. I go there to work out, but really I go there for the chats because both Matt and Kara have some good, good chat. And then Scotty, man, just warms your heart, doesn't she? So uh, that was a lot of fun. Let's talk about Dubai Fitness CrossFit Championships. Day one is in the book, the ski field, uh, indoor ski field events. I really like them. They were nice and simple. Um, often Dubai can push the limits. You know, they ride the line of like getting too cute with things. And uh, I feel like they did it well there to restrain themselves, to just keep it simple. A run and a ski erg, of course. Why wouldn't you use a ski erg on the ski fields? That makes sense, doesn't it? The ski erg and the run and then the weighted vest, it was great. And uh, Ricky, mate, dominated, dominated. Winning both events. Man, I've got this feeling that Ricky's gonna win every event over the weekend and just destroy everyone. I've had this feeling, I don't know why. So Ricky sits on 200 points after day one and then of course, Roman Krinikov not far behind on 180 points. Those events were great for him. Good to see Willie George is up there in third place and also Adler in the top 10. Two boys that we haven't really spoken about on this channel much, but uh, that are really catching my attention are the Dukic brothers. Um, those boys are sitting in fourth and seventh respectively. Um, Lazar in fourth and Luca in seventh. Just seem like really good dudes. I've been watching uh, Craig Ritchie's vlogs and they seem like fun boys, hard workers, and uh, I'm excited to see how they go this weekend. The engine that never stops, Samantha Briggs, is leading the way on the lady side. Obviously day one's events were great for her, the running components. Uh, she only just leads Kristen Holte by five points. And then all the other big names are up there. The only athlete you don't currently see in the top 10 that you'd like to see there is Sarah. She's currently in 11th place after day one. I'm not worried. Uh, day one is not necessarily her wheelhouse events. She uh, exceeds, exceeds, she excels at the classic CrossFit workouts. So my hopes are high for her going to day two and three. But let's talk about the three events on day number two. The Dubai CrossFit Championships often have little twists on their workout. They might include an exercise that's a little bit left field, not your typical CrossFit movements. Uh, even the schedule. So on day two, they don't start till 4 p.m. and they've got three events to fit in that night. So they work out at 4 p.m., 6 p.m., and 8 p.m. So every two hours they're doing a workout, uh, which, you know, at a typical CrossFit event, you often have them scheduled a bit further apart throughout the day. But these guys are jamming in three events. I assume it's for the spectators to come and watch on Friday night. Now, the very first event is the liftoff. It's a max clean and jerk, but these athletes only get two lifts. They get two attempts, and the catch is, there's a, there's a minimum work requirement, which is 50% of the workout, which means they have to make one lift. If they miss both lifts, they are disqualified from the competition, not from the event, from the competition. Their competition's over. So that's crazy. That changes the mindset going to these lifts for sure. There's a lot higher risk. So I imagine we're gonna see some pretty conservative lifts to start with, and then some pretty big jumps for that second lift. Obviously athletes would love to have some some more lifts in between, but I imagine they can probably do that um, backstage in the warm-up zone. But it's gonna be interesting to see just how light people begin out of fear of missing or being disqualified from the competition. I am so excited to watch the men on this event. In particular, we have some strong boys at this event. We've got Adler, we've got Tola, and we've got Bron. So three just tanks, 
tanks, I tell you, when it comes to lifting. So those boys are gonna trade some blows, although they won't be, will they? Because there's only two lifts each, but still, it's gonna be fun to see those guys lift. And then obviously on the ladies' side, it's a great workout for Laura Horvath. Uh, I'd be very surprised if she didn't win that one. Event number three, this thing is gonna hurt. It's got a 23 minute time cap, 25 for the ladies, it's a longer workout. But the reason it's gonna hurt is because the first three movements, the row, the A jumps, and the sandbag cleans, it's gonna burn the legs, it's gonna push all the blood down to the legs, and then the next two movements is bar muscle ups and handstand push ups. It's gonna rush all the blood back up to the upper body, and then they're gonna do it in reverse again. So the blood's gonna be going up and down the body. I reckon the, uh, the bar muscle ups and the handstand push ups are not gonna be anywhere near how effortless or nice they would be when these athletes do them fresh. It's gonna be interesting to see how they fall apart after all the leg work leading up to that point. Now the A jumps, we saw these in 2019. They did them with dumbbells on their shoulders. Um, it's like a squat below parallel and then a double foot jump onto a little platform. It's fine, you know, it's fine. They're squatting, they're jumping, it's okay. It just looks a bit funny. Um, it's fine. I probably would have done something else, but hey, it's a movement they're bringing back from 2019. It's fine. Now the question for this workout is, does the whole workout get done with a weight vest or is it only the A jumps that get done with the weight vest? They haven't specified this, so that's gonna, that will change the workout completely. Doing 40 bar muscle ups with a weight vest is very different to doing 40 bar muscle ups without a weight vest. So it's gonna be interesting to see if they wear those weight vests throughout the whole workout or whether they just put them on for those silly A jumps. So event two, the lift off, could be the end of your competition if you don't make at least one lift. Event three has those controversial A jumps. What does event four hold? I actually really like event four. It's a five rounder and every round, they're gonna reduce the field by four athletes. So the four slowest times for that round will sit out and then the next round will go. So the workout consists of a 20 cal bike erg, 15 meters of unbroken handstand walks and then 10 overhead squats at a pretty decent weight, 85 for the men, 60 for the ladies. So again, the four slowest times after the first round, they sit out, the field goes down to 16 and so on until the last round, round number five, you're left with four athletes going head to head. So I actually really like this little lockout system. We saw something similar with the snatch event at the Rogue. Uh, it's very exciting to watch. And my money for this on the ladies side is gonna be on Laura Horvath. And the reason for that is she can really go hard on the bike. She's a slightly taller, bigger athlete. So she can go hard on the bike. I feel like the handstand walk isn't significant enough to really make a difference. And then the 10 overhead squats, I mean, she's so strong. If you're allowed to squat snatch that first rep and then just do nine more overhead squats, she's gonna um, definitely have the upper hand um, on that. And then on the men's side, Tola. Man, Tola can, again, he can really go hard on the bike erg. His handstand walking is great. And again, that weight's nothing for him. Um, same with Bron. So the same people that I kind of picked for the, uh, the, the clean and jerk event, um, the lift off, will be the same people that will do well on this event, in my opinion. So there you go. It's gonna be an exciting day two. We have three events and we'll have a much better idea of where athletes, fitness and strength really is at after day two. Often day one is a bit of a specialist event like we saw on day one in Dubai and you can't really tell you know, where the athletes are at but after day two you start to really see the picture unfold. So I'm excited. If you wanna watch it live, it will be on the Dubai CrossFit Champs um, YouTube channel. You can see the times, the live times right here if you wanna watch it live but obviously you can always watch it back as well. But what I really wanna know is what do you think of the event so far? What do you think of the ski slope stuff yesterday? Was it too boring? Was it good? What do you think of the two lifts and the possibility of someone being put out of the competition if they don't make one of those lifts? What do you think of the A jumps? Are they okay? Are they silly? And what do you think of this knockout system on workout number four? Let me know down in the comments. My tribe, we are at 9,964 subscribers. That means that we are 36 subs away from 10,000. Can we do it before Christmas? I reckon we can, that's not a lot of subscriptions. So if you consider yourself a sexy beast, part of the sexy beast tribe, do me a favor, just introduce one other person to the channel, let them watch a good video and see if they like it. If they like it, they can subscribe. If they don't, they don't have to, you know? No strings attached here, you know? I want people to only subscribe if they actually like the content. But that'll be much appreciated and it'll be an amazing Christmas present for me and the whole tribe. If we can hit 10,000. That's it for today. Stay sexy, 
Keep roaring, love. I love you. You're the best. You're my number one. That's a lie. You're not my number one. My wife's my number one. My, my daughter's my number one. But you're up. You're up there. You're up high. Really struggling to finish off these videos these days, you know? So um, it's going gonna, gonna to go like this. Keep roaring, love. Stay sexy and uh, yeah. Yeah. Nah. Bye.